Whether you are a coding ninja or just starting out with Gantz, so you're probably doing some mistakes or maybe a lot of mistakes. And yes, I personally made a lot of Git mistakes as well. So in this video, we're going to see what are these Git mistakes and what is the right way to avoid those to become better at Git. So the first mistake is committing large and unrelated changes. So for example, here we got a simple project and here we say, oh, we've got this Next.js sort of application or a SaaS application. And let's say got assigned the task to actually go ahead and add the login and sign up form and actually add the authentication functionality and just allow in general users to sign up and log in. So what I started doing is actually creating these two components here, like for example, the login form in here for the user to go ahead and log in and as well as like the sign up form for him to register and everything. And I did a bunch of stuff. I created an API in here for login and sign up as well. Like this will take care of, you know, you know, signing up in here and creating the database e user and everything, the login as well for generating the authentication token and checking if the password is right and everything. And maybe in here for the services, it created this service in here where it basically just going to allow us to interact with the API behind the scenes and send the email and password and get a response and just like encapsulating all of these where the user can actually just go to the form, add his credentials and name and email and login and the same thing for the sign up. I mean, everything is pretty good in here. I've got these files. I'm, I'm a good developer. I put all of those. But when I actually try to commit these changes, when I'm done with these changes and I say, oh, let's go ahead. It's actually time. I'm done with this functionality. I'm done with this feature. I'm going to go ahead and actually commit the changes in here into the repository so you can push them and of course deploy these changes. So right over here, we are actually on a branch that is the bad branch, which is like the bad mistake that you do with this when you try to commit your changes, for example, for a feature like authentication and login and sign up. So for instance, if we go to git log, as you can here, we check the log, we've got two commits. And here we added a bunch of stuff. We added like API routes, we added like components, like UI components, we added services, we added DB providers in here and actually connectors. So many things actually happening in here. And here apparently we just did two commits. So the first one is actually just like literally the initial commit for creating the next application here. So you can safely ignore that one. But the upper one in here is basically, you know, that commit holds all the changes, literally all the changes from the API route to the React components in here, to the services and everything in one single commit. So this is actually a very, very big mistake. They just put in everything inside of one big commit. And because all of these changes are not directly related with each others, you just still putting them everything in one single commit, which makes it super, super bad. It actually has a lot of downsides doing it that way. And for instance, if we switch the branch and go to the good authentication flow in here with the git commits, I'm going to go ahead and clear git git log as well. And here we see a bunch of commits, right? So many of them starting from like the initial one in here and going up. So each step in here, every single time we create a new feature or we like put a related stuff, for example, here added a sign up component in here for you know, great user registration and added a commit for it, uh, user login in here, I added another commit for it and actually, you know, committed those changes. And when I made like a sign up route in here working with the database, I did that one as well. I did like, oh, add user sign up API integration with a sign up form. So I integrated that with the, you know, sign up form in there, like the API, the same thing for the login in here. So every single step I make like related changes that should be grouped together I go ahead and actually commit those together with a nice message that explains exactly what it's doing. And these are called atomic commits. And the rule of thumb in here to know when to commit or not is basically when you have like related changes, for example, you add like an old service in here and the old server in here has like, for example, you add a new method for logging in. So that method should be actually used with a login form. So you go ahead and actually integrate that with a login form. So you do handle login and actually use auth service dot login. I mean, this is, is good enough because this actually get, I can having an API integrated through the auth service in here and from the auth service inside of the login form. Now you're making this login form more of like integrated with the API, making it fully working. It's time to actually commit because this could be represented and could be explained with one single commit sentence, which is like allow to log in authenticate users through the login form. And the other reason why we would actually follow atomic commits in here is basically easier debugging. So let's say at some point of time after four months or six months, you discover a bug in your login in here and you try to exactly come over back in here and exactly trace the commits and see exactly what's going on behind the scenes. So you could tell exactly which commit you should expect or inspect for the bug. For example, you've got like a sign up bug 
inside of the route. So you just go ahead and read through, through the history in here, the commit history. You go down below in here, for example, add sign up route working with database. You know that, oh, it's somewhere inside of the sign up route. And this is the commit where this thing is actually happening. So you can easily copy the commit ID in here or commit shot and basically just go ahead and switch that. So you can do checkout and you just go to that commit. Now you're back into that commit and you know exactly you are at that point. You can go to the sign up route in here. You make sure that there is no other changes and you can easily trace that one. But imagine you end up with something like this where everything is put inside of one single commit and you try to go back for debugging and you try to go through the history of the commit you've put before. You're literally not going to understand exactly what's happening in here. And the third reason is actually going to make your PRs a lot more easier to actually code review and see exactly what's going on when you use atomic commits versus when you just put everything into one very big commit. So for example, there's actually bad PR in here, we has, you know, the bad approach with one single commit, like everything is put in here, when like your teammates or, or somebody on the team tries to actually come over here and actually look into the code for code reviewing, it basically goes like, for example, open the commit right over here is going to see, oh, oh, my God, like, you've got all the V's literally put inside of that commit. But for the good one in here, when you split it up into atomic, small, related sort of commits, it makes a lot of sense and exactly, oh, you see, oh, I want to check, oh, they had the audit login route with DB credentials matching. So I'm just going to click on this one. It takes me straight into the file that actually changed. I know exactly that. Oh, this route changed and the DB in here had some changes as well. So I can easily follow along what's happening and easy code review as well. Now, the second mistake is actually overlooking the importance of writing informative commit messages. So for instance, in here, for example, we take this branch with this bunch of commit messages, the same commit and changes we saw before on the previous example for login and sign up, but with a little bit of different commit messages. For example, in here, this commit message is supposed to tell you that we added the login functionality, but instead, the guy who actually put that commit message or the author of this commit decided to be a little funny and actually, I don't know, put that in context where his teammates gonna know exactly what's happening. You know, you're just sharing a joke with your teammates. That's pretty fine and pretty good. But it's definitely not a good idea to put it inside of a commit message that actually describes a change inside of your code base. All of us as developers, we depend exactly on the commit message to take a first glance of what that commit is for and what it's exactly doing. So when you tell telling here or only VIP instruments to the digital party, nobody's going to know exactly. For example, this commit has the power of a thousand unicorns. I mean, what is that supposed to even mean? The other one here, we're connecting the DOS in the digital orchestra. Oh, that's pretty cool. But I, I, I literally understand nothing from that. I don't know exactly what this one is doing. Uh, maybe the database and all, it just became buds. Somehow I can tell, oh, you, this command in here, you're connecting the database with your APIs or something, but I don't know exactly what's happening over there. Uh, maybe, oh, enable top secret user login functionality. Something to do with login, but I don't know. But if you compare the previous ones with these ones, of course, these ones are a lot more descriptive. They tell you exactly what change they're doing, what implementation that was, what that commit message is actually about, what changes it did. I mean, that's a lot more descriptive. That's a lot better. I mean, you don't need to put fun inside of your commit messages just to make them look funny and then just have that jokey side of you. It's going to really, really hurt the team. It's going to actually hurt the code base. It's going to hurt the changes that you put inside of that one. And it's actually going to make it very, very hard to tell what that code exactly is doing. The third mistake in here is actually using a global git config all of your repositories. So I did this mistake a couple of months ago where I was just using this global email address for literally all of my repositories, including my work repositories, my personal projects, my open source projects. And I really didn't realize that until like I made this commit where I was working on this the work sort of repository and I used mistakenly my global email address that was personal, by the way. And I used that personal email to push some commands in my work repository. And my manager literally called me like in 20 minutes or so asking who's that person that actually just pushed code into her private repository. And I was like, oh, oh my God, I, I, I really didn't know exactly what's happening. And I was really, really confused exactly. Oh, wh what is exactly happening in here? Then when I checked, I was sending one global email for all repositories. That's pretty dumb. Now simply to check your global email or name, so just do git config dash dash global and you do user dot email and this will print you your email. For example, you have like personal dash email at gmail.com. 
And if I try to see the local, what I mean by the local is actually only this repository that I'm right here on is going to have that email, which is just local to that repository and is going to overwrite the global one. So you just do dot dash dash local in here and you do user dot email and this will give me this. So if it gave me the exact email, the same one as the global in here, then you're basically just using the same thing for the global and the local. And you simply the simple fix in here, just make sure to go ahead and override your local email addresses for your all repositories that needs that. For example, for you know work repository in here, so you just do local user dot email, and you simply just go ahead and do it like a oh, work email at gmail.com. And they simply will go ahead and set your local one to this repository in here to this new email. So that way, you're not going to do dumb mistakes as I did. And the fourth mistake in here is actually not knowing about this awesome git plugin in here sooner, which is like the git extras that actually going to give you superpowers for your git CLI. So these are simply an extra git commands that actually built to make the most out of it and actually just make you productive. So these commands are actually missing from the original git CLI, of course, and they are added by this plugin git extras. So you can do a bunch of stuff. As you can here, if you look through the commands, there are a bunch of them. So for example, I've already started that one. So to know if it was installed for you or not, just do git extras dash dash version and you're going to know exactly what version you've got. And for example, I can use this command. So git summary, and this will actually go ahead and give me the summary of what I did on this project, for example, the repo agent here when it was created, um, the current branch, for example, the last active, uh, active in two days, like the number of commit files, uh, authors in here, which is going to give you a percentage of between authors because it's just me in here, some 100%, and so many cool stuff actually. Or maybe you're too lazy to open up the git ignore file in here, so you can use the CLI to add a file. So you can do git ignore using this command, and you can just add whatever you want and ignore. So for example, you can do oh ignore dash me in here and just put it between quotes, and you can click add in here. And you're gonna tell oh we add in ignore me in here. If we go ahead and open git ignore in here, right on the top you're gonna find ignore me was added. Well, the magical command that I really really like is actually git magic. So you just do git magic. You make sure you've got files that are actually staged for commits, and simply do git magic in here. This will actually go ahead and generate for you the right commit message for you. Just like immediately do that for you automatically. And if you just go back, go get login here, just add to that just quickly for you. So you can go and actually check all the rest of command and installation inside of the git repo, just type in git extras in here, and you will be there. And another really awesome git plugin in here that actually helped me a lot throughout the last couple of months, and it saves me ton and ton of time is the git open in here, which actually just simply allows you when you do git open, it opens the repository that you're currently working with inside of your code editor. I know that seems pretty simple, right? But sometimes we don't know exactly which repo we are in. Maybe we cloned it open source. Maybe we're just too lazy to go ahead into Google and actually put that repo name and, and go to GitHub or somewhere. But now with git open, you can easily do it. So you just do git open and this just, just type in like that one. It's gonna take you exactly to the repository homepage in here. Get mistakes in here, just gonna land you right over there. Or maybe you can just do git open dash dash commit and it will tell you exactly to that commit that you just write into inside of your code editor. And that just makes it super simple. You can go to issues, pull requests, so many things. You can check out the documentation, of course. Actually, it's very easy to install that. You can just install it using npm if you want to just go into you know shell configuration hell so anyway guys thank you for watching hope you guys enjoyed and catch you hopefully in the next ones